so good morning everyone so we were at the topic of gravitation and uh, if you recall last time uh, we were going through elliptical orbit uh, based on kepler's law so let's uh, take up one more question on elliptical orbit and uh, see if we recall in case of elliptical orbit what are the points related to elliptical orbit whenever object goes into elliptical orbit two principles are two equations or two conditions are valid and those two conditions are that since uh, this uh, any planet the force is always directed towards the sun hence torque <coughs> torque about sun is zero if torque about sun is zero if we take the angular momentum angular momentum will not change angular momentum remains constant so one condition angular momentum constant and second is mechanical energy is also constant so based on then in this orbit we find there are two positions when velocity is perpendicular to r vector one is called uh, when it is nearest another one is farthest but that's only when the uh, it, it has no radial component is only tangential and uh, uh, and both the cases both the cases angular momentum are equal and we also based on this we arrived at based on angular momentum being constant it also leads to concept of area velocity constant so let's look at one question which is based on this application of planet revolves around sun in elliptical orbit what are things which are given here semi major axis is given and area velocity of the planet when it is nearest to the sun is given and even area velocity is given nearest to the sun any point of its orbital motion area velocity will be the same it won't change the least distance is uh, planet in the sun also is given so if i understand in terms of figure what are things which are given here so per semi major axis this distance is given that's the semi major axis either this part or this part a value is given and what is the area velocity is given and uh, when it is nearest to the sun so this distance is given and area velocity is given if area velocity means this multiply by distance divided by 2 is given so in indirect velocity also is given so this is information given and what we need to find we need to find the minimum speed of the planet so just think of it what is this point here the when it is uh, nearest to the sun this speed is maximum and when would the speed be minimum when it is farthest r becomes more the speed becomes minimum so what we need to find in this question we need to find this value here and let's think of it how are we going to find this value here see this is something to find we know per v max into this distance is equal to minimum velocity into this distance angular momentum being equal so what i essentially need so uh, yeah to to find if i get this distance from here to here since area velocity is known i can find v minimum how do you find the distance very simple i think information given if you use properly a value is given and this is what is given a value and nearest distance this is given this distance is a into 1 minus e so this value and this value from these two i can find the value of uh, e value here or i can find value of okay so a is given and once we find e value here we find the maximum distance also what is the maximum distance from here we find e and and maximum distance also is very easy a is given so 2a minus minimum distance actually e is not even required here i'm just calculating this part here so maximum distance will be equal to 2a minus minimum distance the distance is known here once the distance is known it's pretty easy aerial velocity is equal to 1 by 2 v max by r minimum is also equal to 1 by 2 v minimum into r max so equate aerial velocity to this term here we can find minimum velocity okay for maximum distance position we substitute we get this answer here so once this information given you could have easily calculate eccentricity also we can calculate semi minor axis and what would time period be in this case in this case time period also is proportional to t square is proportional to uh, cube of uh, semi major axis and how do we calculate time period in case of orbital motion we calculate time period based on area of the uh, area of the orbital area which is area of ellipse divided by aerial velocity we get the time period and this is a small uh, uh, sub topic called escape velocity and escape velocity is fairly simple to understand here escape velocity suppose somebody is on the equator he throws an object vertically up for him it is vertically up but when you are looking from the space this vertically up for the observer will appear like this so anything which is radially outward is called vertically up as far as gravity is concerned So escape velocity from surface of a planet of mass m and uh, radius r. So what we know, if we object is projected vertically up, 
it experiences gravitational pull and hence it keeps slowing down and typically it comes to momentary rest and start falling back that's what happens when we throw a ball vertically up and even something if we gun also we fire a bullet vertically up even that also will fall back and more the velocity we give higher the value of velocity given projected vertically up larger distance it will go farther it will go so question comes here what is the velocity i need to give so that it does not come back this is escape velocity so escape velocity is minimum velocity such that it does not fall back or if y does not fall back it is fall back because of gravitational pull when the velocity becomes zero but by the time velocity has dropped to zero it has reached a point where there is no gravitational pull then it will not come back so that's very simple logical way of thinking escape velocity minimum velocity such that it does not fall back or it reaches infinity where gravitational pull is zero so if it is able to reach infinity the gravitational pull becomes zero it will escape gravitational pull so as only one force is acting during its motion that's gravitational mechanical energy is conserved so whatever energy it has at the point of projection at any point also energy is same so based on that we have arrived at escape velocity so we apply it between two points which are the two points so here one is of course point of projection this initial point and which is the final point we are thinking of final point is when it reaches a distance r is equal to infinity and it reaches this point here this point is escape velocity and this is b here so if we write the equation here initial total energy is for gravitational potential energy uh, gravitational potential on the surface of planet into ma mass which is being projected potential into mass we can write that also or we can write a gravitational potential energy also any any of these two terms plus this is equal to 1 by 2m uh, square of velocity at infinity that v infinity square indicates at what speed it reaches infinity and reason potential term is not there here because the distance r is equal to infinity which comes in the denominator potential energy becomes zero now if we have to calculate escape velocity the minimum velocity so what would this minimum velocity depends on this velocity will be minimum when this uh, velocity with which the object reaches infinity is minimum so if we put this main velocity at infinity as zero we get escape velocity so what will happen if we give velocity which is greater than escape velocity it will reach infinity with non zero velocity and if we give velocity almost exactly equal to escape velocity it will reach infinity with zero kinetic energy from here we very easily we can arrive at a v term it comes something like this 2 gm by r and uh, for, we can if we multiply r r in the denominator and numerator gm by r square becomes equal to g term gravitational acceleration it is valid for earth it is also valid for corresponding value for any other planet and in terms of questions also sometimes asked in terms of density and all so if you have to write uh, how is escape velocity uh, related to density of planet and radius is, is proportional to rho into r square so simple questions on uh, escape velocity uh, based on such proportion there are number of questions you can practice you but they are very straightforward very simple questions okay so let's understand some more questions based on that and uh, we we'll look at some other question which give an idea which has come in the past which gives an idea what kind of question we should be prepared for so a satellite of mass m is in circular orbit of radius r about center of r so sorry i think i have written other way around i have written this small m here just to understand what it means and a meteorite of same mass falling towards earth so this is satellite is small m is is going into circular orbit and there's another meteorite which also has same mass and it is falling towards earth so it has velocity one of the satellite has tangential velocity and meteorite has velocity directed towards center centripetal velocity and they have completely inelastic collision okay so in that case after they have completely inelastic collision they will become like one combined mass and they require a common velocity and common velocity we can easily calculate that will come based on conservation of moment so question is what is the subsequent motion and this how the question has come and i just look at this i think this was more like a qualitative question no no calculation is necessary so let's look at how do we examine this question and velocity after collision after conservation of moment we can easily calculate its v and v not velocity will become something root 2 v not it will become root to uh, sorry it will become v not by root that becomes the velocity soon after collision so what happened compared to orbital velocity this velocity has become even lesser that's what we notice at this point whatever orbital velocity it needs 
it is lower than that. So let's see. First of all, let's eliminate the option. This is a qualitative question, no calculation necessary. So in a circular orbit of different radius, this option is straight away ruled out. Because what? why we rule it out? In case of circular orbit, any particular point, velocity must be tangential to uh, radial vector. It must be perpendicular, which is not here at this point. At no point, velocity can have a, 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 a component which is directed towards center. So this option is out because this velocity is not tangential here. In same circular, any circular orbit question is out. And escape also is out because velocity is not equal to velocity has to be root two times the orbital velocity that we can very easily calculate here. So even this also, all three are out, it will have an elliptical orbit. And that's what we had done earlier also in case of Kepler law. If velocity is a little lesser than orbital velocity, it has an elliptical path. If it is greater than that, it also elliptical path, one but different way. Okay, other three, all options can be ruled out. And as velocity is not given in a tangential direction, path cannot be circular. That's the key point we need to keep in mind. And the second point what we need to keep in mind, in order to escape, velocity, velocity should increase by a factor of root two compared to orbital velocity at the same point. Okay, but this is a similar question I, I think we just briefly discussed in last session. Let's do that again, similar question. A satellite is projected with a velocity root five by six times the escape speed from Earth's surface. So this is how it is projected. It is not escape velocity, it's less than escape velocity. And we can easily verify it is greater than orbital velocity. Had it been equal to orbital velocity, it would just move along the surface of the Earth. And orbital velocity has to be equal to escape velocity by root two. So we can easily check that is not even orbital velocity. Initial vessel is parallel to surface of Earth. What is the maximum distance of the satellite from center of Earth? So uh, again, uh, just to refresh our memory, what kind of uh, motion it will have? We check this velocity here is something like this. If I write this velocity, this velocity is less than escape velocity, but it is greater than orbital velocity. So whenever it is something like this, it will have a what kind of path? It will have elliptical path. It will not escape to infinity. So it will have a path which is bound. So if it has an elliptical path, what we need to get, what is the maximum distance it will have. So very easy to arrive at those numbers. What is what we need to calculate? What is the maximum distance satellite? So two ways of calculating this answer. What are the two ways of calculating this answer? Let's go through. We know the escape velocity is so much. And hence, based on that velocity of projection is equal to, hmm, basically multiply this into root five by six. This is the hence velocity of projection which is greater than orbital speed. Orbital speed is equal to gm by r the whole thing square root. So we understand it's greater than orbital velocity. So it will have elliptical motion with a point of projection being perigee. This will be the nearest point. If its speed is greater than orbital velocity, this will be the nearest point, And farthest point will occur on diametrically opposite side. So this will be perigee. That also we understand from here. So two ways of solving the question. One way of solving the question, if one particular point, if I know the velocity, and if I know the corresponding orbital velocity, I can use this relationship. V square by V naught square is equal to one plus E. So we substitute this value. V naught speed of projection is given. Square of this term divided by orbital velocity. Orbital velocity is equal to root of gm by e bar r. Square of that, this is the term here. That has to be equal to one plus E. And based on the numbers which are given here, we arrive at E is equal to two by three. If E is equal to two by three, the maximum distance, you understand from here, hmm. E is equal to two by three. So E is two to two by three, what is this distance has to be in terms of uh, semi-major accident and eccentricity. This distance is nearest distance, one minus E, and this distance is A into one plus E. So R is equal to A into one minus E, so I get a value of a from here, a is equal to 3r. If a is equal to 3r, so from here to here, the distance is 2r. This distance, sorry, from here to here, the distance is twice the semi-major axis. So a is 3r, it means from this point to diametrically opposite point where it will be farthest and where speed will be minimum, this distance is 6 6r. Hence, what is the farthest distance from center? This distance is equal to 5 r. Our same thing we could have done, we could have solved based on conservation of mechanical energy 
and conservation of angular momentum. So this kind of path it will have. So we can, and we should understand here when will be perigee, when will be apogee. Next question is something like this: a satellite is moving the constant speed v in circular orbit around the Earth. An object of mass m is ejected from the satellite such that it just escaped from the gravitational pull of the Earth. At the time of ejection, what is the kinetic energy of the object? This is asking him, and this question also is extremely simple question. And it's, uh, it is moving velocity v, uh, it's orbital radius. If velocity is increasing in a tangential direction, what we understand is just kind of recap for we are looking for possible option, the path will be elliptical if v is less than root to v naught. As long as the velocity is greater than orbital velocity. So if we increase velocity by 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, still it will be elliptical path. So what has to happen for it to escape? Velocity has to increase by 41% or the, corresponding to this 40. <coughs> yeah, for something like 41.3%, it I need to. <coughs> okay, so uh, if velocity is equal to root v naught, then only object will have hyperbolic path and it will escape. So uh, if uh, this object escapes, just escapes, uh, its velocity must have been root two times its orbital velocity, which is v. So uh, hence its kinetic energy one by two into this velocity root two v naught. V naught is orbital velocity, and which is equal to v, which is given here. To very easily get the answer is equal to mv square. Yes. So this velocity is like in which frame of reference, sir? All, all in down frame. Okay. Is, is any doubt in this question? Tell me, is there any doubt here? This is a question which the actual question has come. So is there any doubt about at the time of ejection, kinetic energy of the object? Mass is ejected from the satellite. Kinetic energy means that nothing else is mentioned. It has been the ground. Yes. And the circular speed also, I think there's absolutely no doubt about which frame of reference. If they ask something, this is the work relative to, see, the, what would be other question? If you are asking this question, let me ask other question also. Now, suppose this is orbiting here. From here, another small mass m is ejected. And this is ejected in the backward direction, the speed v dash. So we see, and this mass is much smaller compared to mass of the satellite. So we can assume the velocity of the satellite doesn't change much. And so the question is, what has to be the minimum relative velocity? Then it becomes some other frame. What has to be minimum relative velocity of ejection of a small mass m of m so that it may scale? That also becomes very simple. If this velocity is v, in ground frame, the mass velocity has to be equal to root 2 v. Hence, the relative velocity becomes equal to root 2 plus 1 v. That has to be relative velocity if it is projected in the backward direction. And if it is projected in the tangential direction, what has to be relative velocity here so that if it escapes here? Even if it's projected in the perpendicular direction, sum of these two, vector sum of these two has to be equal to root 2 v. So all ways we can solve, all different ways. Is that clear to everyone? Yes. Okay. So next up, uh, type of question, this also variation of, the two, three variation of escape velocity. All concept, concept remains same. If you understand here, the, we are using conservation of mechanical energy and we are equating to mechanical energy at infinity, which is zero. So whenever, I think one more point I can mention here, if any object is given escape velocity, at any point of time, at any point of time, if we calculate, see the distance will keep changing from the uh, earth. So any point of time, what we calculate is velocity will be equal to escape, escape velocity at that particular position. So any position of its motion, if object is given escape velocity and this traveling, any point if we calculate this velocity, it will be equal to escape velocity at that particular position. Because total energy will become zero. Any point of time, the total energy has to be zero. And what is the condition for what kinetic energy it must have to escape? It must have a kinetic energy which is equal and opposite to the potential energy at that point. So any point of its motion, it will be zero total energy. Zero total energy is a power, 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 power. we can keep in mind. 
So next one is slightly different type of question. Two stars of mass, both mass are equal. Let's put the mass as capital M. My value is given, you can substitute them later. They are at a distance of, uh, this distance is given, the distance D is given. They rotate in a plane about common center of mass O. I have drawn two figure. This is something how they would look like in the plane of motion. If you look in the, from the plane of motion, and if I look from the top, this is how they will look like. They are moving the circular path. And a meteorite passes through moving perpendicular to star's plane, rotation plane. So this is a meteorite. It is at the midpoint here. And it is moving perpendicular in order to escape the from gravitational field of double star. Now it is being acted by two fields are acting. What is the minimum speed the meteorite should have at O so that it escapes to infinity? Okay, so we have this is the side view and this is the top view. And we can understand from here, and these two are in rotation. But even if they are rotation, see, as far as the motion of meteorite is concerned, then see whether they move or they are at rest and fixed, it doesn't make a difference. The field remains the same. The field on the meteorite as it keeps moving in the perpendicular direction, it remains unaffected by circular motion of both the stars above, under mutual force of attraction. So due to symmetry, meteorite will move along the perpendicular path bisector at all times. Initial velocity along the bisector, it will keep moving on the, along the bisector, two forces being equal. And, and you can as, again understand here, in this case here, what is the field, initial field? Initial field at this point is zero, both are equal and opposite. Initial field will increase, it will reach to maximum value, and thereafter field starts to decrease. We have done this maximum field multiple times, and you should be able to recall that part also. When does the field become maximum? We can easily calculate. Okay, so condition for escape velocity reaches infinity with negligible kinetic energy, or total energy is zero at all instances. And that's what escape velocity means, if it is given escape velocity. Let's equate total energy at midpoint to zero. So at this point, what is the total energy? If it is zero here, it will reach infinity. So uh, it will have uh, two terms of potential energy, potential energy to do to this star and potential energy due to this star. Since both are creating equal potential energy, masses are same, distance is same, we can multiply twice the potential energy between this and this. What is the twice of potential energy? Potential energy minus G, first mass into second mass divided by the distance, negative of that into two, plus 1 by 2 mv squared, this is a term, and we easily calculate, very simple calculation, and you can get your an answer. And numbers are also given such a way. And only thing I will suggest, whenever numbers are involved, whenever you have something like g here, you can always approximate as 20 by 3. This is very close to 20 by 3, so it helps in ca cancelling out some of the figures. Because some of the mass was equal to 3 and all, so it gets cancelled. So whenever you have g, take as 20 by 3, it makes the calculation real faster. Okay. And then this escape velocity, it comes something like this expression. You put that one, very easy to arrive at. It comes to root three. And option was very easy to identify. So fairly simple question. One more vari uh, variation here. Uh, this is something like this. It, escape velocity can be given for any arrangement of fixed mass system. Only thing previous case, uh, this case, it was not a fixed mass system. But as far as meteorite is concerned, the position with this, even though they're rotating, it was, the effect was similar to a fixed mass system. Now coming to this case, what is the minimum space should M be projected from C in presence of two fixed masses? Now they're not in orbital path, they're fixed. And if they're orbiting also, answer would have been same. If they're orbiting in this plane, answer would have been same. So uh, what is the minimum speed here? And the direction doesn't matter here. So all this thing you have to keep in mind, the direction, regardless which direction you project, even if you give the escape velocity in this direction, same velocity it will escape. That, no? So direction is irrelevant, and we can prove that point, but that's OK. That's OK. Leave it so condition for escape velocity, again, same thing. We know that one. We have gone through that one. So we'll equate total energy at point C equal to 0. And which is fairly simple. Since two masses are symmetrical, so we'll calculate potential energy between M and capital M and multiply by two. So minus G into first mass into second mass, divide by the distance, distance is root two R, multiply by two, plus one by two MV square equated to zero. We get our answer escape velocity, which is fairly simple to calculate. Okay, and one more variation inside a spherical mass on the you have a solid sphere. Mass is capital M and radius is R. Inside this, a cavity is created here. And gravity has a radius r by 3. And the way it is created, the perimeter is tangential to it. It is shown like this. 
what we need to do find the escape velocity for a particle if projected from a on the sphere so this is from where i have to project and as we said earlier the direction is immaterial whichever direction we project here okay it will have a hyperbolic path the axis direction of axis will change but hyperbolic path you know always is unbound it will always it will not complete orbital motion it will escape so let's do that <clears throat> so again uh, by now i think we should have uh, understood here what we need to do we need to calculate the total energy at point of projection need to be equated to zero that's what we need to do so if uh, for purpose of calculation of total energy here as far as calculation of potential energy goes i can replace spherically symmetrical mass with the point mass so this figure i can redraw something like this so entire mass which is see for solid sphere i place the entire mass m at o similarly the center of a cavity is at p so mass of the cavity also i place here at it at the center but i have written is negative because this mass has been taken up so you can either calculate potential or subtract or you can visualize the total mass being m here i have added cavity mass and subtracted addition has gone here and the subtraction here i can write like this so this is how i can calculate potential at point a now calculation of potential a for mass m is really simple is between this and this plus potential due to this and this so when i have put the minus sign here i will not change the sign of potential had i not put the minus sign i would have subtracted the potential due to mass in the cavity that's the principle of superposition so condition that's a apply the equation we equate here minus gmm by this distance is r and this distance will become 2r minus r by 3 so we just put those values and mass is m by 27 so what i have done here i have put the sign same i have not changed the sign here i have just changed the sign of mass here so either you change the sign or you change the sign here one of the these two these two potential will always have opposite sign when you are having cavity and plus this one we can find an expression so any such thing also we can do and this question could be you can do like this also any other point also we can do all those things are easy we can find an answer So one more thing, uh, 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 this is a little interesting question. So this is like Earth and this is Moon, and it may not be very exact number, but let's do the number. Okay. So this is if we take mass of Moon is capital M, mass of Earth is 81 times so 81 m, and let's take radius is r by t and radius is r, and distance from center center is tan r. So very interesting part. So what we find here, see, it takes more fuel for a spacecraft to travel from. Earth to Moon, then for the return trip. Now, so uh, whatever fuel it consumes from Earth to Moon, on the return trip, it will consume less fuel. And you can think of why. And uh, uh, explanation is very simple. Assuming the mass of Earth and Moon to be this number, whatever is given here, then find the minimum uh, kinetic energy of spaceship. Energy term is minimum kinetic energy of spaceship of mass m projected from Earth to reach Moon. So let's see. We say whatever energy is required, whatever fuel is required, either if fuel can be used to burn as it moves along, in that case mass will change. Another way, what we imagine when we talk of escape velocity, escape velocity we always talk uh, as if there is no. It's not like rocket propulsion. It is receiving energy as it moves along. Move along. No, it is not happening. We assume that it is entire one burst. Entire energy is given. So there is a big propulsion right near the launch pad. and that itself is given huge energy just like a projectile afterwards it doesn't it, you it doesn't get any fresh dose of energy so what is the kinetic energy which need to be given here so that it reaches moon here now in this case it is not reaching infinity so this question is uh, similar but different all cases it will escape earth but it is not reaching infinity it is reaching moon here how do we calculate minimum energy so this is a little interesting and you want to understand why it takes unequal energy just think of it so those who have gone to tirumala hills you understand you start from tirupati the bus traveling to tirumala while climbing it will consume more fuel than it consumed on the return trip return trip what will happen because even if you switch off the engine also it will keep moving under gravity something similar happens to this also see what is happening up to some point as it is moving the force is pulling it back that's why it need velocity it velocity will keep decreasing but if once it reaches a point where so you know there will be a null point here until null point it will force will act like this it is like climbing a hill after it reaches null point the force will be directed towards moon 
So null point, that's what the null point means. So from this point onwards, it doesn't need any kinetic energy. It is something like this starting from here in terms of potential. If you have to reach point something like this, if uh, this is from earth you start. So if your kinetic energy should be sufficient to reach this highest point. So you need to just reach the point of maximum potential energy. If you reach that point of maximum potential energy, afterwards you don't need any energy. So need energy to reach the point where net force is directed towards earth. If you reach that point, beyond that point, net field being directed towards moon, no further energy is needed. So what is that point where the direction of energy field changes? That's the null point. A null point here is at a distance of nine, nine hours from the center of earth. Very easily you can calculate null point here. So it will be at a distance 9R. So null point is somewhere here. It will be at a distance R from the moon. So what we need to do? So it just need to reach the null point. So when we are calculating energy, we'll equate this point. I will take as initial point. And I will take this as the final point, which is the null point. What is the kinetic energy it needs in the null point? It needs zero kinetic energy. That's how the equation is formed. Initial point, final point. Final point is the null point. And we are also the kinetic energy has to be zero. The, even if the kinetic energy is zero, afterwards it will move down because of gravitational pull towards moon. So that's why I hope this part is understood. So we'll equate mechanical energy at the point of projection and null point. So at the point of projection, we'll write GMM by distance from the center. Distance from center is R here. And distance from the center of the moon is a 9R. The total has to be 10R plus kinetic energy has to, when it reaches null point here, the from here to here distance, it becomes 9R, and from here to the center distance become R. We substitute this values, we can find an answer. So this is another type of question, all of you should uh, uh, make yourself, make, make sure that you have understood well. And, uh, and null point, if you want to think of, what is null point here? When the field becomes zero, when the field becomes zero, when by du by dx is equal, where is the potential energy maximum minimum? Potential energy will be maximum minimum, when the du by dr is equal to zero. And du by dr is equal to zero, the maximum minimum will always occur at a point which is the null point, here, which is the case here. So it will be potential energy is a negative value. So if I draw potential energy curve shape here from uh, zero to 10 R, the shape will be something like this. It will be all negative only. Sorry, I think I'll redraw that point. So potential, if I draw, if I this axis, it will be negative, it start negative, this something like this will put, and this will be the highest potential. Okay, but one small point, uh, just last one. Is sometimes I know some of you might have come across the world with some of the meteorite and all. They they come, uh, they enter Earth's atmosphere, and they go like a slingshot. Thus, I understand what a slingshot means. So, the, the, just see, understand this part here. A uh, meteorite of mass m. This is small mass m is approaching with the velocity v at a large distance. The distance is large, but it has non-zero velocity. Large distance also it has some velocity v. And impact parameter. Impact parameter is something like this. If I draw this velocity, so if I continue this, if I if this draw a straight line, its direction of motion at infinite distance has a minimum distance of b. That's called impact parameter. Impact parameter is the line of motion, the distance of line of motion from the earth. Earth is not moving, but because the gravitational pull when it's moving, see, it will always be, see, when it's traveling here, force will act like this. So it will, as it's traveling, the force will speed it up, but it will also keep bending it towards earth. So it will have a, some kind of path like this. And because symmetry, it will go like this. So that's the kind of path any particle, any meteorite, which has initial velocity, which is not directed right towards the center. If it is directed towards the center, impact parameter becomes zero. It becomes a head-on collision. And when this is not along the line, it will have this kind of motion. So can we calculate what will be the shortest distance from the arc? And what are the important points? The distance is shortest only when the velocity is tangential. So this velocity is V. And this is the here, the velocity will be maximum here. And this will be the shortest distance. Can you easily calculate shortest distance? Yes. So there are two unknowns here. This is the point when it is nearest to the Earth. And there are two parameters which are unknown about that position. What is this distance will be? And what is the velocity of that instance? How would I calculate? So I need two conditions to calculate V and M, V and D. And two conditions are based on conservation of 
Is this wrong or this is not necessary? Conservation of mechanical energy and conservation of angular momentum about the center of Earth, we can find an answer. We're going to call it slingshot. shot. But this also becomes slightly lengthy. So that's why I'm doubtful whether it would come in next. So this is all for gravitation. So we end up with the gravitation here. I think this we have done more than what is, I think more than what is necessary. If you followed everything what you've done in gravitation, you should not have any problem in solving any question which comes from gravitation in mains at least. Okay, so now I will start with 